Um, I'm Sarah Cooperman, and I'm the moderator of this beautiful nutrition webinar, because why? Because I don't know anything about nutrition. Actually, that's not true, but I, I don't know as much as my esteemed colleagues. Um, we're very excited to bring you these webinars. They're free webinars for the fitness community, our SCW family. This is a very difficult time we're going through. And um, as such, we like to share these free webinars with you. I think it keeps us kind of strong, keeps us going. So we've got four, we've got three fantastic women that are on this panel. It's a bunch of chicks talking about food, what could be better, I'm so happy. We've got Sohalia Digsby with us. She's a registered dietitian and author of several nutrition education books. We've got Candace Setti, Dr. Candace Setti. She's a licensed clinical psychologist, which probably I'll have private consultations with later. And she holds multiple nutrition certifications giving her a very unique perspective on nutrition and weight, weight management. We have a wonderful woman, Trisha Silverman, who's also a dear friend, who is a member of our SCW faculty, and she has authored multiple SCW nutrition certifications and just came out with her first book. So we're very, we're thrilled to have her involved. These wonderful ladies also present at our Mania conferences, which many of you have been to. Would you do me a favor, all you fabulous participants, wiggle your mouse if you would please. And you can see the chat box in the middle, which is actually, it's, it's a, a beautiful orange. Um, and I'd like you to click on that. It's actually, I think it's either to the left or the right of your share screen, the green share screen button. And you can click on this and please type in and tell us where you're from. We love to start like that. Um, we have about 500 people that have registered for this webinar today. We've got over 200 of you have already shown up. Oh my goodness, Miami, Florida. We've got Georgia. We've got Arkansas, Texas, North Carolina, Buffalo, New York, New Jersey, Kentucky. Oh my gosh. This is insane. Yay, Chicago, Illinois. So I am just going to dive right in because we've got 45 minutes of these wonderful ladies times. And I also have to thank my staff. Um, Sean is on this webinar with us, who is our creative director, who has done an outstanding job putting everything together for us. So the first topic we're going to talk about, and please do type in questions if you have them. And if you notice, you guys, we've shut your cameras off and we've also muted you. So I'm very sorry about that. I know for fitness professionals, that's a horrible state of being. But if you could type in questions in the chat box, we'd love to, we'd love to connect with you on that. We turn your cameras off and we mute you because um, otherwise the bandwidth of having so many people on a webinar really gets a little bit out of control here. And, and I know that half of us on this panel already told our children to turn the games off in the house so that we could hear and see you guys. So our first question is, how as fitness professionals can we guide and influence our fitness clients into better health through nutrition. So focusing on getting them in better health through what they're eating. Now, raise your hand, the three of you. Who wants to go first on that one? Okay, look. All right. I see. I, so, Hala, up, up. So, Hala beat you, Candace. All right. Just by your nose, yeah. Okay, so, so Hala, share sure with us. I'm sure any please. of us will be happy for, to, for yeah. you to call on us, Sarah. Thank you all so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here to share with you all. And this is an unprecedented time. And some people are in their kitchens a lot more, which poses the issue of them facing things they didn't have to face before all day. And then some people are in a more stressful position than they've ever been in, or others are in a more bored position than they've ever been in. So a lot of those lead to emotional or um, aimless eating and so um, as health professionals, it's so important that we 
get closer instead of back off. And in every way that you can with the social media and webinar opportunities, Zoom, texts, whatever you can to be in touch with people and be present and let them know you're there to help them is really important. The last thing they need to do is have their gym family disappear when it's such a big part of their emotional and physical well-being. So there's lots of different ways we can do that. One of my very favorite ways is to create a Facebook group. And Facebook actually looks really fondly on Facebook groups in terms of its algorithm. And so you can invite people, if you haven't yet, that were in your classes or that are in your um, personal training settings or whatever it is to join this group. And it'll take less of your time than it would to be constantly texting them, perhaps, or constantly emailing them, but you can be in touch with them that way and let them know that you're looking out for them. And then you can inspire them by sending them messages or questions to make sure they know you care. And then they'll all jump in and everybody can feel connected still. I think that connectedness is so important because anybody can jump online and do videos. But the reason they like you and the reason they come to your classes or to your sessions or to your gym is not just for the workouts, it's for that connection. So we still need to be there for that even though we can't be with them in person. That's great. And um, Candace, please share with us your thoughts on this. Well, I wanna piggyback on some of the great things that Sarayla just mentioned um, about maintaining connection. Um, because you know, so many of us have lost connection and, and normalcy in so many aspects of our life. And a lot of us as fitness, wellness, health professionals are still able to provide services in some form or another to our clients. And we are one of the few ways that they have to maintain some sense of normalcy from you know, life before, so to speak. So I do think that staying connected with your clients in any way you can, and I think the Facebook groups, groups that um, Sahela mentioned are great, but I think the individual connection has a lot of value as well. Um, one, because it, again, like I mentioned, it gives you that sense of normalcy, but two, it provides a layer of accountability, which is always something that we tend to do for our clients. Um, and it, it reminds them that this is not a time to kind of throw in the towel, so to speak. It's not a time to forget about everything they already know or everything that they've been doing, that they're still connected, they're still focused, their health and wellness is still important, and that you're still kind of there, either checking in with them, holding their hands, supporting them, giving them encouragement, whatever it may be. I think that it's really important not to lose that right now. So this is a way for us to connect with you know, a lot of us on this call are, are like me. I'm a fitness instructor. I've got these people that, that for whatever odd reason, love and adore us, right? And, and they support us. And now we're going to try to guide them with, with nutrition. And I'm a little bit nervous because I don't want to provide information that I don't really know the answer to. So I see Trisha nodding her head furiously. It's, it's a yeah. little frightening. <laughs> Why don't you, can I ask him to jump in here? Yeah, I think that it's such a great question that you're posing. You can feel very comfortable as fitness professionals using anything from the dietary guidelines. So I would download the current dietary guidelines and read through them. Then you can do fun things. You can talk about sugar, not eating a lot of sugar, at the end of your online fitness class, maybe do something fun, like you show them how much sugar is in m and That's quite a bit. And uh, if people eat in comfort food, they might want to know how much sugar they're getting. We want to be careful with sugar because it affects your first line of defense, your innate immunity. But you can do little things like that, just show little fun things at the beginning or at the end of your fitness class, but you can feel very comfortable sharing anything in the dietary guidelines. And also it's a good time to reread the physical activity guidelines as well, and just share from, from both of those. And then any of the certifications that you take for SCW, you can quote the certification. So I'm teaching the nutrition coaching for fitness professionals this Friday. So I hope you can join me there and you can feel free to quote anything from the manual 
because uh, that was written by Melissa Lane, who's one of SCW's nutrition faculty. And then the active aging certification, you can quote anything in there because that's written by a registered dietitian. So you can feel very comfortable with the SCW certifications and there's a lot of them coming up. So I suggest you look into them. I feel like I paid her to, to make an ad, okay? <laughs> you're, you're a little, you're, yeah, whatever. She's enthusiastic, we'll leave it at that. But what other, I'm, I'm just, this feeds us right into this. What other apps, books, tools, and guidelines do you also suggest? Like, do you have your book there? I know, so, so Hala has a number of books that she's written and, and information that she supplies. Trisha, what book do you have? Do you have so, a copy of it? I should have brought mine. Yes. No, I'll show, I have my book and then I brought a couple of others that I think could be helpful. So my book is Healthy Dividends and um, I, I wrote it um, to be an overall general guide for healthy eating, but I've been teaching about immune uh, immune support for years. Immunity boosters and busters is a um, seminar I've been giving for years. So there's a lot of immune boosting tips in there. Um, and then let me just show some other books that I enjoy of uh, the Blue Zones. I think if you read the Blue Zones books, you'll learn about areas of longevity and there's great tips that can help to support your immune system. Such as what, are the, what are the Blue Zones? Can you so share sure. it with? No, I but I mean, where are they in the world? Sure. So they're across the world. I tend to call them longevity cultures because there's more than just what's written about in this lovely book. But there are areas like Loma Linda, California, um, Okinawa, Japan. Um, some of the ones that aren't in that book are Hunza in northern Pakistan, Abkhazia in the former Soviet Union. And then written about in this book is also the Nicoyan Peninsula in Costa Rica. And when you look at these areas, People live long, healthy lives without the, the diseases that we see like heart disease and diabetes and Alzheimer's and cancer in our country. They don't have those rates that we see here. And um, one of the things they do, lots of vegetables and fruit and nuts and seeds and beans. So many of these cultures lean toward a vegetarian type of diet or they are vegetarian. Interesting, that's very interesting. And, um, uh, Candace, are there any books or apps or tools that you recommend? Well, I think all three of us have books that are probably very useful during this time. I think all of them kind of provide a structure. Oh, thanks, Trisha. There's mine. Um, <laughs> all of them kind of provide structure and guidelines or are programs that people can really use this time to follow. Um, I like to talk more about guidelines with my clients than apps or things like that. Um, and some of the guidelines that I focus on are not all that different from what I focused on before all this. And a lot of it is about how to make things not be so different from how they were before this. And mm -hmm. so I talk a lot about structure with people because most of us prior to this shelter at home, we had a lot of structure in our lives, right? We got up at a certain time, we went to work. We did all these things at the same time every day. And what that meant is we had a lot of meal structure. We had a set time that we had breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks every day, and we didn't really think about it. It was just something that fit into our day. And so now I try and encourage people as much as possible to create that same structure in their life, even if it's arbitrary, even if their work life is not forcing it. So if they can get up at the same time every day, especially if they can follow the same meal structure every day, where they're eating meals at a certain time and letting their body start to cue them for meal time, as opposed to boredom or- I love, I love hearing that. I don't want to interrupt you, but I got a wonderful question up here. Somebody asked, I'm gonna have two things. Somebody really suggested a recipe swap, which I love that idea because yeah. It, it gets uh, them yeah. interacting with each other. And, the, and what, mm -hmm. like what I miss as a, as a yoga student, I always go to like tonight, I'm gonna, it's after this webinar, I'm gonna run. I'm actually wearing my garb under here, but I'm gonna go take my class. I miss my camaraderie. So I love the idea that somebody shared with the recipe swap, but there was another person 
who just threw out a question there who asked about intermittent fasting. And I found that very fascinating because my son came home and he's 23 and he's, he's not eating after nine o'clock at night and he's not, and then he doesn't eat again until noon the next day. And I said, Max, you know, it's like, he's an athlete. Like, why are you doing this? I want to get lean. And I'm like, well, I'm going to ask them on this webinar about that. So I love your feelings on that, Candace, or any insight you have. Um, I, intermittent fasting can be a great thing for some people, um, which is probably not dissimilar from just about every style of eating. There's certain style of styles of eating that are great for certain people and not great for others. Intermittent fasting has a lot of um, research backing it in terms of um, health, um, development of human growth hormone during your fasting periods and life longevity. And a lot of people feel energized by it. And for those people, I think it's great. There are plenty of people that don't get that. There are plenty of people that it's not good for. Um, I work a lot with the binge eating population, and it's particularly contraindicated for that population because it does set people up to binge eat, right? You have this set window of time that you're allowed to eat, and it's not structured, right? I eat from noon to 8 p.m., so given that, I can eat as much as I possibly want from noon to 8 p.m., and at 7.55, I'm going to eat everything I can see because I know at 8 p.m. I have to st stop eating. So there are certain people, depending upon your relationship with food, who it's not a good fit for. And, you know, I, I don't believe in any sort of one size fits all approach to eating for anybody. And I feel like this just sort of falls into that where for some people it's great for, there's some people it's terrible for, and then there's people in the middle who can kind of go either way. Um, thank you. Uh, so Hela, do you have something to share? <laughs> I think she's muted. Yeah, so Helen, you're muted. Can I you? Think, there I you go. Myself. Okay, awesome. I think at this time with the stress levels high and people, not everyone, but a lot of people having more access to reaching food during the day, putting some discipline in place related to appetite and hunger and management of when you eat is really, really important. I don't know that it's the best time for everyone, especially some of our fitness population folks who do tend to err on the side of binge eating or disordered eating. I don't believe it's the best time to go that long, possibly without eating, because that can also impact their mental health levels. But I do think it's, it's a super good time. Oops. We lost Sohalia just, just a little bit. Um, Tricia, what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? So my thoughts are when you, if you are intermittent fasting, let's use your son for an example. When he does eat, let's eat healthy food. Yes. Let's not eat Twinkies and garbage during that time. Let's just eat really healthy. Then I think it could work. My thoughts about this time are that everyone's handling it in a different way. You want to be kind to yourself. If you slip up, then just get back on track. If intermittent fasting works for you, then I think it's great. But I do agree with Candice, and I know Sohela has mentioned in the past that if you are, have a, a history of eating disorders, it really might not be the right way to, to go for you. Um, but if, if, if it's something that you think might work, why not try it? There was a, one of the comments, and Sohela, we'll come back to you. Thank you for rejoining. Um, there, this, another Perfect comment man. was doing it, intermittent fasting, finishing your eating at 7 p.m. and then just starting again at 7 a.m. the next morning. And I, the only man. reason I kind of like that is because I tend to be that late at night, well, I'm going to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I just keep munching throughout the night. And that's how you put on, I mean, a couple of years ago, I just accumulated over 10 years, 10 extra pounds. And I, and I had to, I had to lose it. And I hate losing weight. <laughs> so please share with us. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, I lost connectivity there for a second, but thanks for um, 
let me come back with my thoughts on that. I do think a 12 hour window is a great, great place to start. There are benefits from intermittent fasting, but there's also downsides as we've talked about in terms of mental health and emotional health. And I think people's emotional health right now is pretty shaky. So I don't know that it's time to start something that drastic, but I think it's super smart to do a 12 hour window and you can still get many of the benefits that you do get from fasting from that 12 hour window. And whether it's seven to seven or six to six or nine to nine, isn't that relevant as much as you're giving your body a break from food and you're giving yourself some discipline. Mm -hmm. Another thing that scares me, Sarah, is that in the evening, I'm way less smart at 9 p.m. than I am at 9 a.m. And if I don't give myself a cutoff, then I might be munchier than I was. And I might not munch on like salmon and salad. I might munch on ice cream. Or um, if I was a wine drinker, I might sip on more wine than I meant to because my brain is tired. And even now, I feel like our brains get tired more because we're, like Candace said earlier, Dr. Seti said earlier, it, we're, we're used to having to do things we're not used to having to think about things as much as we were because we were on autopilot in our schedule so much. And so now we're using so much different brain power that I think we can easily just let ourselves overeat or over drink without paying attention, especially if we do it in those weaker hours of the night when our brain is just tired. So I do think having a, a 12 hour window is a smart way to do it. I, I love that idea. I, I tend, I'm, I'm going to try, okay? Maybe Can I'll I add on a little, a little side note to that? Yeah, Just a different perspective on it. For Some people love the idea of trying intermittent fasting, some people don't, but so Hale's point is a really good one that we're all a little weaker around food in the evenings, and most of us tend to do that mindless grazing, that back and forth in the kitchen thing at night. And another take on it, which ultimately ends up being sort of the same thing as this 12-hour fast, but not as time to the clock, is implementing um, what I call a kitchen closure time. Just a time of the night where you say every night, maybe 8 o'clock p.m., kitchen closes. We put everything away, we turn out the lights, we leave the kitchen, and the kitchen is now closed, almost like as if a restaurant were closed. And the idea is simply you, you don't go back in there the rest of the night because the kitchen has been closed down. And it's not as structured as saying, okay, now I can't eat again till 8 a.m. in the morning, but it sets up for the same sort of dynamic while taking that idea of grazing back and forth into the kitchen out of the equation at night. And some people like that, that concept a little better, even though it's sort of doing the same thing. And um, no, it, it, the, you know, the kitchen is closed. Okay. Like there's, exactly. you know, when my kids were younger, it's like, I have four boys. All they did is eat, you know, it gets to a point where it's like, mom is done. Kitchen is closed. But, but um, Dr. Seti, uh, Candace, what, I got another question in the chat box that I really liked. Also, is now a good time to like try a new diet because we're in, uh, you know, we're, we're in, I'll just leave it at that. We're all in, we're locked in. So somebody wants to try the whole 30 diet. And I thought, okay, that opens up two questions. Is now a good time to, to start something new because we're in a new normal anyway? And what do you guys think of the whole 30 diet? Um, so well, I'll, I'll definitely address the first part of that question yeah. um, about now being a good time. Um, and, and my answer is probably the same as the intermittent fasting question, and it's for some. And it really kind of depends on your personality. Some people um, are taking this as an opportunity to try new things, to branch out, to use the time, whereas other people really need to create that same sense of normalcy, to have things be the same, to have the same eating structure, to have the same plan, to follow whatever worked for them. And if, if you fall in that camp where you're really needing that normalcy, that connection to the way things were, it's probably not a great time for you to be trying a new diet. Whereas for somebody else, maybe they've been super busy all the time and have always wanted to try the Whole30 and just never felt like they had the opportunity or the time to cook or the time to research or the time to gather recipes. Then this is a fantastic time to take advantage of that and to try something like that. So I think it really comes down to personalities, not just how you are, but how this time is impacting you both from a mental health standpoint and a behavioral standpoint. 
I, I'm just going to chime in here on a personal note. I really tried the whole 30 because I have a son who um, is, is, has a uh, migranosis, which is constant migraines. So we tried an anti-inflammatory diet. It was uh, no dairy, no gluten, and it was a little bit lower in carbs, but it was a very healthy diet. A lot of chicken, um, uh, lean meats, a lot of whole vegetables um, and fruits, and it was a very healthy diet. And you feel better when you're fueling yourself better. And it's really nice. And, and that, that's something that I found interesting. I see Trisha's looking down at something, but um, I did, one lady <laughs> typed in the chat box that she's been doing the Whole30 diet for eight months. She feels fantastic. She hasn't lost a lot of weight, but she, she feels it's just this boost of energy. So Trisha, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so my thoughts about that, that eliminating the sugar and the alcohol is a good idea. And uh, I have um, just some examples of, that's what at the guidelines for alcohol say, five ounces. And many people are filling, up, filling it up a lot more than that. So whole, whole 30 says get rid of the alcohol. I like that. But any diet that's telling you to get rid of beans, I don't agree with. So I'm just gonna show you inside my cabinet here. And you can see a lot of the beans that I have up there. Um, so let me tell you about the beans. So beans, you want to try to get them in all different varieties. So lentils, black beans, chickpeas, um, pigeon peas. They are foods of longevity. I don't agree with any diet that tells you not to eat beans. Um, they form the, uh, they're a great um, form of protein. Um, and, and of course, you have to have a, a grain or corn with them to make it a complete protein. But when you look at areas of longevity across the world, beans are a staple. Um, what I do like about Whole30, um, decreasing the sugar, and I showed you earlier the sugar in the M&Ms. So another thing to show you, be careful with sugar, because look, look at these granola bars and that whole plate of sugar. Um, be careful with things that you might think are healthy, and it's almost as much sugar as, look at these cookies. So be careful with things like that. So I like Whole30 because it's telling you, let's get, let's get rid of the sugar and the alcohol. But I think that some grains are good, especially now. So you see my whole grain poster right there. Whole grains can help boost serotonin, which can make you feel good. So I think having grains in moderation is really great. If you're looking for weight loss, let's watch the portions that we're having of the grains. But getting whole grains in, such as oatmeal and brown rice in small amounts, really is a great thing to be doing. And um, could yeah. you, I'm going to just jump in here because I got a, two, two different people in the chat box said, what is Whole30? So could you give us a, um, can, yeah. I'm going to ask Sohella to, to jump in right here. She, sure. She's waving at me. Yeah. Hey, yeah, thanks. The Whole30 diet is really, it's not a diet so much because there's not calorie control. It's unlimited calories, but you avoid certain foods. Trisha mentioned you avoid sugar, you avoid alcohol, you also avoid all preservatives and additives, which does make it really challenging for most people, especially people who are in the shoes that you mentioned, Sarah, where they're cooking for more kids now, if they're homeschooling and having kids at home, it might be a little more expensive and it might be harder to find those things. So I just wanna be careful because like I said, I think it's really important to know your audience. If your audience has ample time because of the um, shelter in place, then they may have more time to learn new recipes and to learn new techniques and to cook more often. If they're in my shoes, I'm homeschooling three kids and working, then adding a super stringent diet right now may add so much stress that it's not gonna be helpful in the end and that they're probably going to quit a few days in. So we need to be careful who we advise that to. And so I think that's an important thing about us knowing our people and knowing that if we're making a, a statement at large that we're making it to some people who are on the front lines and some people who are at home. So that's really important. But the, the Whole30 is a diet that you do for 30 days and it's really intended to help figure out any intestinal issues that people are having. I'm sorry, the sun is going down right as we speak, right in my face. I'm sorry for that. There we go. 
um, the the whole 30 is for 30 days. And most people, I heard someone say that they did it for eight months. That's a long time. Most people don't wow. do it after the 30 days. I've worked with clients one-on-one -on -one for over 20 years. And the past five or 10 years is when that's been pretty popular. And most people don't make it past the 30 just because it is expensive and difficult, but not impossible. And it usually helps people identify some things that were giving them some gut disturbances. Because a lot of times when we eat foods with a lot of additives, processed foods, our body is sending this message that says, this is not a food. So I'm going to bloat out your belly and pulse your head and say, this is not something you should have put in me. And so I think when you're doing the Whole30, you don't have any of those foods on board and it can help you really identify if you're having tummy issues going on. But I completely agree with Trisha that now is not a good time to cut beans out of our diet because it's going to help us with... Um, Beans and oats are two things I don't think they allow in that. And, and that's not a good time, I think, to strip us from some of those healthy fibers. Because you know how when you travel, sometimes your intestines get on a different system? And I think even now with routine being ingested, people's guts are on a different system, if you know what I mean. And so throwing those off by having less fiber is not advised. So if you are going to do the Whole30, then you would really have to eat a lot of volume of those fruits and vegetables to make up the difference for those grains that you're taking out in order to not have too little fiber, which is gonna backfire on your gut health. And so there's a lot to think about. And I don't think that's a bad idea to start that if you have the time and money, but I do think it could put you in a really stressful state right now, which is not the smartest thing for a lot of people who are already at a high stress level. Um, and what's interesting is People are avoiding going to the grocery store. And if you're relying on a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables, it's, it's a little bit, it, that does create that stress. I, I went today, I put on gloves, I put on a mask. I ran into friends. They didn't even recognize me. It was just not fun. Um, but somebody also put in the chat, like, aren't you concerned? Like with the COVID virus, like, aren't we, you know, we've got fresh fruit and vegetables and like, you know, I bring them in from the store and I wash everything off, um, everything. I take everything out of the bag. I throw away the bag immediately. I still have my gloves on. I still have my mask on. I wipe down the counter and as I wash things off, I take them out of whatever container they're in, wash them off, and then they go into my own my own bowl, my own container. And it, it's very time consuming and it's hard to do. Um, but I've also even washed off my bananas, the outside of the bananas, because I don't know who's been touching, touching those. So it does create, it is time consuming. Um, are there any other types of diets? I'm looking here, I'm getting a lot of questions vegan protein. So talk to us about that. I'm going to ask Dr. Seti to talk about that. Um, there's a big thrust towards, and I know that um, uh, Candace, I can kind of sense that you like to personalize the diets you recommend for people and, and how they're going to embrace it and follow through with it. But can you talk to us a little bit about the vegan proteins and the diet? In yeah. That yeah, of course. Um, I think actually Trisha and Sahela both just talked about legumes in particular. Um, and, you know, as we were talking about the Whole30, how, you know, one of the things that a lot of people have in the nutrition world with Whole30 is that it does restrict legumes. And many of us embrace legumes as being nutritional powerhouses, right? Superfoods, and they're definitely on the top of the list of vegan protein sources. So if you're vegan, Whole30 is a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, but um, legumes are my number one for vegan protein sources. Then um, there are a lot of whole grains, you know, oats, quinoa, things like that, that can give you some source, good sources of protein. A lot of seeds, nuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, everything in the nut family. Um, hemp hearts are a wonderful source of protein. So there are a lot of alternatives. And then, of course, whole food-based soy products, um, things like tofu and tempeh, um, things that are not overly processed. Um, edamame is another one. Um, and when I talk about soy, I always feel like I need to immediately follow that up with the distinction that 
whole food soy is not textured soy protein or hydrolyzed soy protein or any of those random things that you see in the ingredient list on a veggie burger. I think Trisha just grabbed something that will display exactly what I'm talking about here. But um, I'm talking about a whole food based version of soy, which is the soybean, right? Which is primarily tempeh and edamame and then um, tofu is basically minimally processed soy milk. So those are your best soy based sources of protein, vegan protein. Great, great, thank you. All right, Trisha, what are you gonna show us now? <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of stuff, but I wanted to um, talk about some of the things that help to, can help to boost your immune system along the lines of um, what, what Dr. Seti just mentioned. Um, beans, really important. They have iron, they have copper, they have folic acid, vitamin B6. These nutrients have all been shown in animal studies to help support your immune system. Um, one interesting thing I noticed that whole foods was out of you, you guys immune system is huge now. Yeah, because we're dealing oh, yeah. with a very serious virus. So thank you. You're welcome. So um, I'll just take a, a couple of minutes and just share a few things about boosting your immune system. Eating a rainbow array of fruits and vegetables really key. Getting fresh fruit fruits and vegetables really key. Selenium is a potent antioxidant, and you can get it in Brazil nuts. So if you're going out and looking for different nuts to get, Brazil nuts are a great nut to get. Now, Brazil nut, uh, selenium, along with apples and lemons, have been found in research to support lung health. These, that's really key right now. So um, they've been shown to help protect against asthma. Anything we can do to help protect our lungs. So get your lemons, get your apples, get your Brazil nuts in. Then try to get fresh fruits and vegetables in their whole state. Rather than running for vitamin C, you want to get the orange. And this is research-based to protect your immune system. It's better to get the whole food rather than running for supplements. I noticed in the supermarket, zinc was wiped out. Well, did you know you can also get zinc in sesame seeds? You can put that over a really nice salad. Um, that's what I did recently. So um, that's another yeah, one. I've got one question for you. We just, it's very interesting. Uh, someone said, why are we listening to people on like, that have certifications? I'm like, I get this. You, have, you guys have to understand, these are licensed registered dietitians we're talking to here. Um, and we've, we've got someone who's got her PhD. So these are very, very well-educated women that are sharing these very va these valuable advice with us. Um, you showed the cans in your cabinet, yeah. Trisha. And we did get a question that those cans can be packed with sodium. And, right. and, yeah. and the one you just need, I think I just we need to answer this is that it's okay. Can you share about the canned beans? Sure. So some of them that I have are low sodium up there, uh, no salt added. So these two, but I'm going to give you a tip for what you can do to reduce the sodium. This is 365. That's the more inexpensive brand at Whole Foods. Here's another organic low sodium one. However, with regular beans, and I have some up there too from the cheaper supermarket in my area, um, I have market basket um, beans that's up there. You also have Goya beans. What you can do is rinse and drain them at least twice to reduce the sodium. And that's um, real, so just remember that little tip. Um, you do want to keep your salt low during this time because salt can affect inflammation. Um, so try to keep your salt on the lower end side, but you can reduce that, that salt. So rinse your beans really well. And then the reason that I'm trying to go organic is some of the beans do add um, some, they do have some artificial additives in there or preservatives. So you do, um, right now might not be the right time to go completely organic and be really strict with yourself. But um, if you're looking for real optimal health, that, that's the way to go. Um, but right now, whatever the supermarket has, let's make the best of that. And, and I like the supermarket idea. I'm not a real big cook. Um, I'm a bad cook, okay? I'm great with the spreadsheet, 
Nobody can beat me, but with, at cooking and recipes, I'm not that great. And I saw somebody in the chat talked about um, uh, Hungry Root, which is a service, or Blue Apron, which is a service, or um, I've also done a service called Cooked that's organic, that's, that actually does the meal, it creates the meal for you. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Seti about this because I think, again, this deals with behavior and, and choices people can make. What are your thoughts uh, on that? Thoughts on the, the meal services? The meal services. Okay, well, um, the, the ones you were talking about initially are the ones like um, Blue Apron, where you get all of the ingredients for the week and you can make like three, I think like three recipes. And um, from, there's a lot of different companies that do this now. And a lot of them are organic, a lot of them, I think almost all of them are whole food based. Um, and there's a lot of great things about them, right? For a lot of people, they learn how to cook. Um, they learn how to put things together in ways that they might not have done so before. What I've heard from a lot of people that they love about it is that they don't have to buy a giant bag of whatever X ingredient is because they get the little tiny amount that they need for that recipe. So the convenience of it is great. And I know a lot of people have embraced that right now because one, it gets them all the ingredients, which people are having a hard time finding in the store. Two, it comes right to them. And three, they don't have to think about cooking. So it's just, you know, the recipes are there, the plan is over there. So I know a lot of people like it. And as I mentioned in my answer to a lot of the other questions, this also falls back on what is good for you right now. Um, you know, if, if taking the stress away of figuring out what to have for dinner is a great thing and, and getting a meal subscription like this does that for you, then I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, for a, a lot of people, it's not fitting into their budget right now. So um, that might not work, but I feel like there are ways that people can create this on their own. Um, and and Woody, I don't want to interrupt you if you're still- No, go ahead. I, I, I also, somebody typed in here, well, what about isogenics and herb life? Like what about- Like something? meal replacement? Yeah, these yeah. meal replacement. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of shaking of heads, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think Trisha I, might want to jump in on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked the question, okay? I'm not an advocate. Okay, go ahead. That's so Hala's waving too. Okay, so Hala, chime in, girl. I think the most important thing for us to do is major on the majors. So first of all, we've said that you need fiber. Fiber is a prebiotic. It makes your gut happy, which makes your world happy. We'll just leave it at that. And it helps fill you up. So you need to focus on fiber and in as many colors as you can get it. Like Trisha said, eat the rainbow. Uh -huh. Those basic things are going to be your guide. They really are. And sometimes it can be I don't want y'all to stress right now over whether your beans come from a can or from a bag. Though I'll tell you, I cook for five people that eat like 10 people because I have teenagers and I'm going to do it from a bag because I make two pounds of beans every time I make them and I don't feel like opening all those cans because two pounds of beans turns into a massive amount of food. And then I can freeze some and make the most of that. And I do have a cookbook that teaches you how to make a lot of meals that focus on the colors and on those um, so I think that's what we need to focus on for our priority. Also, oh, thank you, Trisha. <laughs> Trisha just held it up. Also, the- Trisha, um, did you just hold up? She just held up my cookbook. Okay, say something, Trisha, so you take the screen. This is Sohala's cook cookbook, Best Body Cookbook. It's a great cookbook. Yes. Okay. Sorry, so Hella, go ahead. But there's, I, and I want to mention, if, if we are looking for more simple, I'm going to show you this company does not pay me, but I want to show you like broccoli slaw and you can get organic or non-organic, whatever fits better in your budget right now. They both have super value to them. And this one I just showed you has cabbage, broccoli, red cabbage, and carrot. So it has so many of the colors right there. And, um, Trisha mentioned apples and lemons. And if you chop up an apple with that, just put it, pulse it in your food processor and squeeze some lemon juice on top. That right there with some of those Brazil nuts that she mentioned are rich in selenium, or you can do almonds if that's what you have handy. Things like that are not so hard. I think sometimes we think this is gonna be really, really hard. Now I'm at home, I'm gonna have to cook for hours. It's gonna be really hard. 
I make that, it's on my menu for this week and it takes three minutes if you have a food processor or a blender that you can pulse it in. So I think sometimes we overthink this and we stress about whether the beans should be in the can or not and then we just skip them and we let ourselves get too overwhelmed. And I think protein is another big important factor right now because we don't want to lose muscle mass. We don't want to not plan our meals. And like um, Dr. Seti said, if you don't plan your meals, you probably won't keep that routine going and you won't probably get that protein in. And so that speaks to some of these supplements that sometimes um, if you're a frontline nurse and you're working 12 hour shifts, then I'm not going to tell you not to have a protein shake if that's the best you can do in those shifts. So like, like others have mentioned, we really like to do an individualized approach rather than just saying this is just a no-no. But for the most part, if you're home right now, we encourage most of us on this panel, I think all of us would encourage you to go the whole food route as much as you can. And if you need to supplement here and there, and I that's did fine as long as you're, you're majoring on the majors, which is fiber rich, colorful foods and, and prioritizing produce and protein. That little P phrase will help you prioritize produce and protein. So major on those majors first. And then once you have those down, those are your big immunity boosters and they keep you from getting overly hungry and stress eating because we all get stress. We all do stress eating when we get overly hungry or emotional eating or, or absent-minded eating. And so prioritizing pro protein and produce, that's like a tongue twister, is where we want to start. And then we can add those little details as we, after now, we kind of get our I'm majors. Getting a, I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions. You know, what about the lean meats? What about chicken? What about lean organic beef? What about fish? I know Trisha sh is showing us the puppet again. We love Trisha and her <laughs> puppet. But um, it's, it's like my kids need it. Um, and I got to be honest with you. I, I feel if I don't have some lean meat in, in my meal that I, I don't feel that I get full, that it, it sustains me. Um, anybody have any thoughts on that? Okay, Trisha, go ahead with the puppet. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we want to be looking for anti-inflammatory foods. Your fish is one of them. And you can, you know, get fresh fish or light tuna is better than um, albacore because it uh, doesn't have as much mercury. Um, salmon in the can. And you could even get wild salmon in the can. Fresh, of course, I think is best. Um, Anti-inflammatory foods like fish can help support your immune system. Red meat, on the other hand, works against a healthy immune system through the process of inflammation. It's like sending a false alarm. Um, you want to be really careful and limit your red meat. So when we have inflammation, it makes our body less ready to handle when something like a a bacteria or a virus invades our body. So we want to keep our inflammation low and red meat adds to inflammation and foods that anti-inflammatory like fish and extra virgin olive oil and avocados, these decrease inflammation. So we want to decrease inflammation. So um, after fish and beans, those are my favorite sources for protein, then chicken and turkey. And again, I, you want to limit the red meat. Eggs are also another, they're a good source of protein. They've been controversial over the years. So I would say eat them in, in moderation. And then if you do choose to have um, red meat, try to limit how much you have. And again, with whatever lean meat you're choosing or lean protein you're choosing, you want to have plenty of fresh vegetables and fruit. And Dr. Seti, any thoughts on this? We're getting close to closing time here, so. Well, I just wanna, wanna tie on to where Tricia was going with anti-inflammatory, but I wanna kind of take it a, away from food and talk about behaviors that impact food and impact nutrition. And my big two are sleep and stress management. Because if you are having poor sleep, if you are not managing your stress, you are creating inflammation in your body and you're not getting any of the benefits from the nutrients in your food. Your stress inhibits, inhibits nutrient absorption. So you're taking in all this nutritious food and it doesn't matter if you're doing it in a massively stressed state or you're doing it after having lots of poor sleep. 
So I do feel for most of us looking at stress management with our clients, looking at improving sleep quality with our clients is just as important as looking at what they're eating because if their stress is out of control, it doesn't matter what they're eating um, because they're not gonna get the benefit from that. Stress trumps everything in that realm. So I do think that talking with each one of our clients about their stress management, what is your personal stress management plan? What makes you feel better? What things can you do in your day that make you feel good, that make you feel calm, that make you feel energized, whatever it may be, it's just as important as looking at what they're actually eating. Right. You know, that's a great um, be way to begin our closing. Is there anything else uh, because we're a little bit over time right here. We try to keep these to about 45 minutes. Um, can you give us kind of in a short way, each of you guys, what are your concluding remarks that you can share with these fitness professionals that, pardon the pun, are very hungry for your advice? Dr. Sutty? All right, I'll run it back. Um, you know, what, what I've been doing with almost everyone I work with is attempting to create some sense of normalcy in their life, attempting to connect the dots with before and what will be after. And, you know, for most of us, all of the things that we focused on with our clients previously are still things we can focus on now, whether it be about, you know, better nutrition or good eating habits or building a better relationship with food or a better relationship with our body or whatever it may be. All of those are still things that we can focus on now. It may be that we've lost sight of them in the process. Um, you know, there are, are things that have come into play more recently, you know, like there's been a lot more emphasis on immune system health and, and building your immune system, but that's not dissimilar from anything we've ever been focused on with them. When we talk about, you know, taking care of our bodies, building fitness, you know, emphasizing nutrition, immune system health is a natural part of that. And so I feel like some of us may have lost a little bit of touch with what we were focused on before to be in the present, but I think that focusing on whatever our staples were, you know, you know, whatever, you know, major in the majors, like Sahela just said, right? It's, it's not any different now. It's just that we need to kind of put it in the lens of what's going on now. And the bigger piece of that, from my perspective, is stress management, because stress is the thing right now that's trumping everything. So that's the piece I think we all need to add into the equation with our clients. Very good. Thank you. And Trisha, what are your short words of wisdom to, to share with our crowd here? Short words of wisdom, a few more things you can do. Make your shopping trips short and fast. Have a shopping list so you can be very quick in the supermarket. Plan for things that can last to the end of the week, like a red cabbage, parsnips, carrots, and your winter squashes and root vegetables. Um, another just closing thought, someone in the chat had a question about turmeric. Turmeric is an antiviral spice. Some other antivirals, basil, um, oregano, ginger, and rosemary, those are all antiviral spices. And eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow, okay. And we're not talking Skittles here. Uh, no, so, Hela? No. Oh. Yeah, I think, you know, the book of mine out of my three nutrition and wellness books that's selling the best right now, I think lends to part of what everybody was saying. And I'll just show you a peek of it. It says, make a plan Monday. And then it goes through what you need to do and what are your top three for the day and what's your smart goal for the week. And I think, as Vince mentioned, these um, healthy rainbow foods aren't going to end up in our grocery cart or our grocery pickup trunk or our table if we don't employ some planning. And I know not all of us are naturally wired to be planners, but to, to survive this well, I think we're going to have to make that a priority. Another thing that comes up in the planner, I'm just showing you this because I think this is so important to, to review, is how much water and sleep. What is your workout and your meal plans going to look like? And what is your splurge report? Okay, I like the phrase splurge report because a lot of times we think I'm doing everything right. What's wrong? And then we sit down with our two glasses of wine and pout about it or our chocolate and pout about it. And we don't realize that some of the, the choices that we use to make ourselves feel better after we've made poor choices or poor planning is shooting us in the foot and backfiring. So I think 
if everybody would just take a minute after this to get a piece of paper out and divide your day into four hour blocks and put some food in each of those blocks that prioritize protein and produce and color. And I think your body and your digestive system, your energy level and your immunity will thank you for it. That is fantastic. You ladies are my health gurus. I so appreciate this. I feel like I'm going to get off this webinar. I'm going to have a piece of fish, fresh fruit, and I'm going to, and I'm going to go for the rainbow later. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. We had over 500 people registered. Tomorrow you will see us um, up online. Probably by the afternoon, we'll have the recording up for you so that you guys can all share it with your friends. I thank you all for joining us. I want you all to be healthy. Walk your dogs. Look at your neighbors over a fence, distance-wise. Um, take care of yourselves. I want to give you a little insight. Um, we, SCW, is planning the first ever live stream mania. And we are going to be offering this May 29th through 31st. We have 150 sessions in nine different virtual rooms, seven of which are going to be completely live streaming. I hope to goodness it works. I feel like I'm planning Saturday Night Live out of people's homes. We have 40 presenters that are outstanding, everything from HIIT training to business lecture. We have a whole nutrition track mind, body, bar, dance, you name it, we've got it. Save the date. The beauty is you can go in and out of the rooms however you want. And all of you that have joined us on webinars, you're all going to get $100 off the mania. Wow. Okay. So thank you all again for joining us. I wish you all adieu. Thank you, guys. Sarah. Yeah. Um, Sarah, can I mention a free resource I wanted to share oh, with yeah. everybody? Please, please. I meant to mention a free resource. I have a mini planner version of this that I'm going to email to you if you would like to send me your info. And it's just a quick step. It's a mini planner and it helps you kind of reassess your goals for the, if you need to pivot or change any priorities right now. So if you have a pencil or a phone, all you will do is text the word fresh. And that's just signifying a fresh start for you. Text the word fresh to 33777 and I'll send you this fillable three page mini planner. So the word is fresh and you just type it in like you're typing somebody a text whose number is 33777 and I'll zip that to you tonight. I just, um, I just typed it in the chat box for everybody. Oh, thanks. All right. All right. So thank you all for joining us and you guys have a good evening and don't eat salt or ice cream. Okay. Bye. <laughs>